Hey everyone, Chris Goglin here, recording episode number 15 of my Jump Game Review series. Uh, before we get into the actual game reviews, we're going to do a few monthly housekeeping items. Uh, it's the beginning of July now, so that means that another month of the OCS has been completed. Uh, congratulations to Tom for going 11-1 uh, and one here and uh, qualifying this month. Spots 2 and 3 were occupied by people who have already qualified, Rebel Spy and Wurfs. Uh, Cryptofist just missed out there, uh, as did Aeneas and Stevie Getz. They both had, they all had the same point totals, but uh, their opponent's win percentages were a little bit lower. Uh, Crypto was, at one point, he was like 50 even, and Wurfs was like 50.4, um, with just like two days left to go. But uh, I guess the people that Crypto played lost a couple of games the uh, last few days, um, and that forced him to slide a little further back in the rankings. Uh, hey, seventh, that's not bad this time of month. Good win percentage. Uh, just one, if I had won one more game, uh, obviously my winning percentage would have dropped a little bit because my opponent would have had another loss, things like that. But uh, that could have been me. Uh, but that's what next month is always for. Uh, so July is off and rolling. There's already been a few games uh, played this month. Uh, but like I said, this means there's an at-large bid now, so that's going to come up to whoever has the highest cumulative point totals. Uh, currently, that's Greg Shaw. Greg Shaw had an off month. Uh, he had a bigger lead. He gave up some of it this month. Uh, so I think it's only uh, just a couple of points now that he's ahead of uh, Aeneas and Chris Kelly. Uh, and then I'm about nine points back of him uh, there. I know Paul's pretty close. Uh, so is Silver Glen. They're all really close, too. There's like six or seven guys who are all within ten points or so uh, of Greg Shaw. So it uh, should be interesting to see how that finishes up in the last three months. Uh, but the like I said, July is off and running. If you haven't signed up for July, now's a great time to do so. You have a few days left to do it. I think our registration's open until the 10th. I know it's 4th of July. We gave everybody a couple extra days in case people are out of town. And then when they get back to town you know, after the holiday weekend and things like that. Um, they can sign up and still still manage to get in. Uh, but we've already had a couple games played for July. Greg Shaw at the top there, 1-1. One one. Uh, Rebel, Stevie Getz, 1-0. Paul, 1-0. Uh, no limit, Steve Salucci, who's already qualified, 0-2. Uh, Not a great way for Steve to start off. Steve hasn't played a lot in the last couple months online. He's only played a few games uh, since qualifying the first month in February. Um, but he will be attending U.S. Nationals, which is item number two on my agenda. U.S. Nationals uh, in Atlanta coming up the end of July. Got about 15 people signed up already, pre-registered for the event. Expecting that to close to double by the time we actually get to the event. Uh, should be about 30 players we're, uh, we're hoping for. Uh, should be a great time, even with the Atlanta heat at the end of July. Uh, but we're staying inside playing Star Wars cards on an air-conditioned room, so what does that really matter? Uh, because the room will actually have air conditioning that works, which uh, has been uh, something that at all of our major Star Wars events, with one exception of Worlds, like two years ago, three years ago, that was um, yeah an unfortunate uh, oversight that the AC unit was kind of broken and not really working so well. But there were other things wrong with that hotel too, which is why it'll never be used again, and we uh, just pretend like that never happened. Um, the other thing, big things going on is, of course, the Set 9 spoiler was released in the last week. Um, so we're going to run through this uh, spoiler list here. I'm going to break it up. I'm going to do all the dark side cards, then we're going to jump into the game review, and then we'll finish up with the light side cards. Um, so we'll dive right into that. Uh, there's a couple of errata that also happen here with the Set 9 spoiler, a couple of minor changes. Um, we touched on them a little bit in the previous video about things being changed to the uh, First Order map objective cards. Um, and those look like they've been finalized. Uh, of course, these cards are still subject to change. They do still have to go through the proofing uh, department. So sometimes they'll find little inconsistencies in the way cards are worded, which then could create rules, uh, loopholes, and we don't want any of those. So they may make some minor tweaks or adjustments. Uh, also, you know, the development team does still listen to feedback from players, uh, even after cards, uh, you know, have been spoiled. 
sometimes things do pop up and it's like, oh, hey, we missed that in playtesting or we didn't think it was, you know, our playtesting game show that it wasn't as big of a concern, but other people are playing with these cards now, testing them out. And if there is a bigger concern, you know, there could be a last minute adjustment uh, or possibly even one or two of these cards may end up getting cut from the final set and, uh, and not released. Um, but let's roll right into it. First card, Balotic. Alien Information Broker Leader. So this helps a number of uh, Alien decks. Information Broker helps Black Sun. Alien Leader works really well with Scum. Uh, helps protect Java. One more character to protect Java. Uh, Pilot, which is always nice uh, for uh, Alien decks. Uh, game Text. While with Han, he cannot. Add, he may not add Battle Destiny draws. So neither Captain Han nor Solo would add Battle Destiny draws. Um, or play an interrupt from Lost Pile, so Solo can't play interrupts from Lost Pile. While an opponent's battleground, opponent may not cancel or reduce your force drains here. Um, so that's just another drain protection card, similar to Tarkin's Bounty. Uh, I'm sorry, not Tarkin's Bounty. It's uh, overseeing it personally, and Leia of Alderaan, which kept uh, your drains from being canceled or modified. Uh, this has this says reduce, not modified. So if you are at an opponent's site where you can drain plus one, uh, you will still get the plus one. That was kind of important uh, distinction to make because if it said modify, plus one would be a modifier. So then that would go away, and that's kind of stinks. Uh, Chief Bast, character Imperial, another pilot, ability two. So if you can pull him with, I can't shake him, which is pretty good. Uh, low deploy forfeit, but Imperial Rush Order will bump that up to a five. Uh, while with Vader in a battle you lost, Imperials, Imperial Starships may be forfeited directly from your hand to for printed value. So Imperial Arrest Order would not apply to guys being lost from hand. Uh, neither would do they have a code clearance or anything else that adds to forfeit value, uh, which is pretty big with Imperials. There's a couple guys and ways to uh, you know really pile up their uh, forfeit ability. Uh, but you can do that to reduce attrition and or battle damage. So kind of like Mantelli and Savrip for light side, if you lose a battle, you can start pitching cards from hand so you don't have to lose stuff from the location. Uh, this could certainly help uh, Imperial Entanglements keep their Devastator around, or keep their Executor around, especially with Close Call having a Canceler, which we'll get to later. Um, it's kind of one of the ways they've protected their guys. Now you got to be a little more careful because, you know, if you, if you draw well to clear their guys but draw too well now they lose the battle and now Bast could kick in and just forfeit guys from hand instead um, especially you know uh, something like entanglements that's going to play troopers and things that it could then retrieve so it just pitches a guy out of hand and then retrieves them right back the next turn and you know uses the objective and gets him back into hand so there's a there's a good ability synergy here with uh, with entanglements I expect Bast is going to find a home in that deck uh, Afra Trade Federation, awesome. Another alien information broker, uh, also a spy. So Trade Federation spy, that's pretty huge. Uh, Trade Federation invasion decks uh, don't have any spies other than Probot that they can really play. Um, so now getting another character that they can use that kind of gives them another dimension. Uh, deploys free to an unoccupied site. Droids are deploy minus one here. This could certainly help. Uh, s at least a uh, hope offset something like Yavin Sentry. Uh, deployed search lost pile. Move one card there to the top of that pile. If that card is a droid, may retrieve it into hand. So you deploy Afra and take a droid into hand. Uh, again, good synergy with invasion. Nice little bump up for them. They'll certainly uh, need it, whether it's destroyer droids or battle droids or some other just, hey, you know, combination of guys. Uh, so it's good to get Invasion a little boost. Uh, Krennic, this guy's going to trigger with some of the new Death Star cards. Uh, or Death Star orbiting a battleground. Peek at top two cards of your force pile, take one into hand. That's not bad. Um, it's once per turn, so you can do it on either turn, yours or your opponent's. Uh, once per game, may upload a non-unique Star Destroyer. I think there's only a couple, I think there's just the non-unique, you got the generic Imperial or Victory class, and then I think the Death Squadron Star Destroyers for Special Edition. I think that's about it. Um, not bad. Um, you know, I don't know how much he'll see play over the other version of Krennic, but it's uh, 
I don't know, gives you a little more advantage, gives you more a little more card draw ability, possibly better access to getting uh, you know some of your other stuff to help start blowing stuff up with uh, CPI. Uh, we get an EPP Kylo, standard EPP text. However, he kept the the force loss. So if you hit their guy, they lose a force. If you miss, you lose a force. Um, so that's certainly, uh, you know, an interesting little boost there. Uh, he's also power six. That seems higher than I think the other Kylo was. I think the other Kylo was only power five. Uh, so he's getting a little bump up there. Uh, Lieutenant Venka. minus one executor board a capital adds one to armor and its defense value may not be reduced so that's important for something like taking them with us the admiral's order that you'll see like hit a base quads and stuff do um, where they reduce the defense value of a star destroyer by four uh, with the admiral's order making it then easier to shoot with the uh, the cannons so this guy's going to uh, not only add one to it but also cancel our their ability to reduce it by four, so that's really going to help keep uh, keep stuff from getting shot down. Uh, another guy you can I can't shake him with. While fear will keep them in line here, when you win a battle at a related site where you have an imperial opponent loses two forts. Don't know how often that part of his text will come into play, but I guess there's probably a way to make it work. Supreme Leader Snoke, there's a new First Order character. Uh, first off, who's going to add new dimensions to map, uh, giving them another, you know, high ability character. Looks like he's going to have some decent text. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But he also gives you the ability to... Um, one more card, one more guy you can put down to get a card at your use pile with Bow to the First Order. Uh, if you just initiated a battle where all your ability is provided by First Order characters and First Order starships, opponent loses a force. All right, so there's a few times where, you know, you'll have Phasma and some troopers, or, uh, you know, heck, it could just be Kylo by himself. It could be Finalizer with Hux and PV on it. Um, you know, usually there's some other guys floating around, but, you know, maybe you... Uh, Maybe you reshuffle some things around and don't play some of the aliens or uh, Imperial Admirals and things like that. Uh, if just lost, Kylo is power plus three until end of your next turn. Okay, could give Kylo a nice little boost. So you could drop an EPP Kylo, who would be power nine. So they come, they battle, like you know, kind of like Owen and Baru combo, have that bump up text for Luke. Uh, if you can get your opponent to kill him on their turn and then drop EPP Luke for power 11 or EPP... EPP Kylo, in this case for power 9, uh, you could really uh, do some damage. Uh, he's immune to less than 8, standard, uh, you know, Jedi Master immunity in the, uh, the PC virtual era, um, but only 4 if with Kylo, which makes sense, because if you haven't seen the movie yet, um, he does not do so well when he's hanging around Kylo. Uh, Vane, not sure where this character exactly came from. Not familiar with that, um, but another Imperial ability, four, four sensitive, okay, so Imperial who draws by himself in some situations, okay. Deploys minus three to a site with Vader in game text. All right, there's a handful of sites that mention Vader. Uh, light side, large moisture farm, uh, one of the executor, you know, uh, both of the executor sites, the Hollow Theater and the Med Chamber mention Vader. Um, I'm sure there's others. Uh, once during your turn, may activate one force. Okay, so it gives you a little force activation. And once per game, may upload a card with Vader in title. So you can go get you a copy of Vader or another location we're going to see later on here as well. Inkling of his destructive power. This is another piece of the uh, CPI new deck. Deploy on table once per game. Excuse me. Once per game, you can upload a set nine epic event, so that'll get you the new CPI, which we'll come up to later. During your deploy phase, if Krennic on Death Star may flip set your course for Alderaan, and 
flip back at end of turn. So you flip it during your deploy phase, which would give you the ability to pull systems, because that's what's on the back of CPI. Uh, I don't want to do this thing. One second. We're going to have to pull that up here. I just want to see what's on the back of CPI. Uh, backside, deploy phase may deploy one battleground system from reserve deck, star destroyers deploy minus two to death star system. Four strains of battlegrounds where you have a star destroyer are plus two, that won't come into play because it's deploy phase. Uh, if you have an four system blown away, adds three to force loss for each opponent's you have in foresight, that also will not come into play. So basically it just gives you the ability to you flip the objective in your deploy phase, it lets you pull the system out, lets you deploy Star Destroyers cheaper to the Death Star um, for minus two. Um, I don't know that that will work with alert, because I believe the alert... Uh, no, alert doesn't say to battleground. So you could get the alert my Star Destroyer virtual you know, get the matching pilot and capital guy for minus one each, deploy them to the Death Star for minus two. Um, that's actually, you know, save you four force. So you could get something, you know, Executor plus Piet would normally cost you 17 for that, you know, for the good Dagobah version of the Executor. That would cost you 17. Uh, this could knock it down to you all the way down to 13 which is uh, not bad. Possibly even a little more if you got the Admiral's Order route or something like that. Um, could get it down down to 12 or, and then get other pilots out too. So, okay, it's got some potential there. Um, and then it flips back at the end of the turn, so then you get your battle damage protection back, which is good. Uh, Shadows of the Empire. This is the Black Sun Helper. This was a legacy card. It's certainly been reworked. Uh, as many legacy cards do when they come out. Black Sun on table, deploy on table. Once per turn, use a force to download a Coruscant site, so that's good. That'll help you get Coruscant locations out faster. Uh, saves you the trouble of doing the Vigo pull first turn, so maybe now you can get someone like Guri or something else instead uh, with the uh, Imperial City. Uh, once per if Emperor on Coruscant, draw a top card of Force Pile. Okay. So that'll give you a little more deck manipulation. You can draw the top card of your Force Pile. Especially if you're flipped and you know the cards that are in your Force Pile and the order that they're in. You could, like, spend three, deploy a guy, then draw the card because you know what it is, which maybe is, like, another guy that you can then pay to deploy. Um, so there's, uh, you know, certainly could be some, some strong deck manipulation if you can stay flipped. Um... You know, it's always been a problem for Black Sun, especially in a very heavy Jedi Luke uh, mains light side era. But with a lot of the light side stuff we're, we're going to see, that's going to kind of flip things around. Um, you know, we're going to... Some of the light side decks did get a real big boost. Maybe some mains kind of fade out a little bit into the background. And aren't the auto deck choices for some light side decks... Um, you also get some boosts to, uh, you know, using Luke in space in this set. So uh, Black Sun certainly could uh, could make a run. Um, if you occupy three battlegrounds, opponent also loses one force. So that's pretty cool, um, especially because there's multiple Coruscant locations you could get out and just kind of spread out all over Coruscant with your Black Sun agents. Uh, Spectre of the Supreme Leader, this is going to get an errata. Play on table, Phantom Mass is cancelled, you lose no force to Kylo or Kylo's lightsaber. Uh, this was the revision here because I think in order to so show it triggered with EPP Kylo, because his permanent weapon is Kylo's lightsaber, um, I think that's how they had to word it in order for it to fit or something like that. Um, but it doesn't really say, like I think the other version said Kylo Ren, and now this version just says Kylo, so then it kind of applies to the persona. Uh, so if they make multiples later, so that one really isn't a big deal. Uh, strategic reserves. This is the one we talked about uh, in the last couple of videos. We've we've hinted at a change coming for 
Uh, this only works with non-unique first order stormtroopers now. So you can't use it with the FN guys or Phasma to cancel drains. Um, that will alter the deck construction a little bit. Um, you know, it might be one or two drains less uh, a game that get canceled by those guys. They, maybe they only play one copy of those guys now um, to, do, to squeeze room in for another First Order Trooper or two. So we will uh, see how that goes. There will be no match for you. Deploy on table. Maul. I made to play Maul's lightsaber from reserve deck. Reshuffle. At start of opponent's control phase, may relocate Maul to same site as Jedi. Places effect out of play to deploy Maul's lightsaber from Lost Pile. So this is a nice uh, Darth Maul booster. We typically don't see any versions of Darth Maul uh, being played. other than EPP Maul. Occasionally you'll see, you know, Tatooine Darth Maul, uh, usually in his ship, uh, because of his uh, blanking ability to kind of manipulate dark side space decks, or, or light side space decks, and their lack of uh, pilots that they currently use that are ability for, um, especially in decks like Watch Your Step, where they really only have one or two guys that they can choose from. But, uh, you know, Maul Young Apprentice and Lord Maul, uh, Specifically, Maul Young Apprentice. Maul Young Apprentice is a great card. There just really isn't ever uh, a home for him. Um, and uh, hopefully this card will, uh, you know, give him a little boost um, and put him back into play. But he does some great things, especially when swinging at Jedi. And then this ability here to relocate Maul during their control phase. So you can move him in front of somebody, block their drain, uh, possibly Maul strikes, you know, do a duel, get him off the table. So there's uh, certainly some interesting stuff. Obviously, it does leave him open for, you know, being disarmed or sorry about the mast because it's, you know, the start of their control phase. You're moving in front of them, and then they get the first action. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. CPI, here's the new CPI. Uh, this doesn't target planets anymore. Uh, you fire the super laser, and you blow up. Jeddah or Scarif battleground sites if the Death Star is orbiting them. Uh, so here's how you shoot. Plus X greater than 8. Uh, X equals number of Death Star sites on table. So you probably have three of those out. So you're drawing plus 3 greater than 8. So you would need a 6. That's not great trying to do that. Um, but you can still play Death Star gunners. They cumulatively add 2 to the total. So you get 2 gunners out. Now you only, only need... Uh, they each had two, so you know then you'd only need a two, which is pretty likely uh, to get. Uh, you, one of the sites, the conference room, I think it is, uh, adds one to the total if you have a leader there. So you put, maybe you put Krennic at that site, so now you've got a leader, and you can uh, you know give that a boost, and you can start blowing up some sites. Of course, you're blowing up your own sites. But, hey, you know, you could cause three, four force loss each time you do it. Um, but it is during control phase, so it is going to get neutered by stuff like uh, what chance do we have. That'll get limited, you know, possibly down to re get reduced, rather. So uh, you may not see that happen so much. Apology accepted. Battle. Lose an Imperial leader piloting or Star Destroyer for a remainder of turn. Star Destroyer draws two. If unable to otherwise is immune to attrition. And power may not be increased by any pilots aboard except Vader. It's an interesting card. So basically Vader chokes out a leader and then everybody else fights harder. Okay. That's kind of thematic there. An interesting little concept. Uh, lose an Imperial Leader piloting your Star Destroyer. Plenty of guys you can get rid of that are Imperial Leaders. Ozl, Piet, Krennic, Tarkin, Mahdi, you know, all those guys are all leaders. Get rid of them, and then you get a second battle destiny, if unable to otherwise, so you can't be uh, evac controlled either. And then it makes the ship completely immune to attrition, which is also pretty awesome. Uh, 
just doesn't get any additional power bonus from the other pilots aboard except Vader. Okay. Death Squadron assignment. Man, there's a lot of cards in the set. It's a big set. Uh, let's try and speed this up a little bit. Used or lost, interrupt, used, upload a card with Death Squadron in lore. Eh, I don't know. You'd have to look up and see what those are. Uh, download an Imperial to a Hoth location. Eh, I'm sure that's got some uses. Uh, land of Debris and Sacrifice. It's an interesting one. Used, interrupt. Character's about to be hit. Use one force to prevent its forfeit from being reduced for a remainder of turn. So that's pretty awesome. A war cancel disarmed. That's also pretty awesome. And if they're trying to be hit by a permanent weapon, it's free. Um, so that's really good. And that whole part is immune to sense. So cancel and disarm is pretty good because we just talked about you know the other issues with Maul moving in front of people and then just getting disarmed. Uh, cancel or react. That's also pretty good. Uh, or during your move phase, target any and all your characters at one site to transport to an exterior or battleground site. Draw destiny, use that much force to transport, place interrupt, and lost pile. So it's a restricted version of Ellis. Um, we've seen this card before. Uh, also a, a kind of a legacy, well, this part, it's legacy fact that it was a combo card. Um, and then you've got this other text here, this move phase is on the actual Lando Dobreed card from Coruscant. Um, so you're moving to an exterior or battleground site. Uh, doesn't require you to move from an exterior site though. Um, so it like, get, kind of gets around the a little bit of the restrictions of uh, insurrection or Imperial Rest Order. Not bad. You know what I've come for. This is the uh, starting interrupt. This is being eroded. So now it costs a lot more to get Kylo out first turn using the shuttle to pull him. So instead of you know just deploying the shuttle from your deck at minus two and then getting Kylo aboard for minus three or minus two also, you know, it used to cost five, now it costs eight. So uh, now you got to use a force to take the shuttle into hand. So you can do that at the beginning, you know, when you're activating to make sure you kind of get the shuttle. Um, but it's no longer minus two, so it actually costs you three more force to get the shuttle out, and then Kylo still costs the same. Uh, certainly should slow the deck down a little bit. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Jet S site, this one you can get deployed. Instead of Alderaan by set your course, that's good. Finally, uh, some kind of little fix there. Even if you're not trying to blow up planets, just having a 1-1 instead of a 0-1. Uh, it's a pretty good change to the dark side activation ratio there. Uh, Mustafar, Vader's Castle. This is that new Vader, another Vader card you can take into hand. Uh, once per game, you can download Vader here. And then during opponent's move phase, you can bounce Vader between here and any battleground site. So, um, you know... You get that out, you deploy Vader there, and then during their move phase, wherever Vader is, you just send him out to kill them. And it's during their turn, so then they can move away or whatever, but if it's a location like the Naboo Battle Plains or the uh, Ewok Village or whatever, where they don't have an adjacent location that they could really move away to, um, now Vader's going to be staring them right down the barrel, and it's their turn and your turn's coming up so then you get to reinforce him and then beat the crap out of him kind of seems thematic that's kind of what vader does we get a new palace site so we got another coruscant site another two one if you occupy three battlegrounds you can retrieve a black sun agent into hand that's once per game so that certainly should help uh gives you some options of guys to get back if you lose the prince you can help get him back too um if they control, they can retrieve dash into hand. Uh, the reflection's two dash, not the dash and speeder. Okay. And then we get a matching pilot dude, first order, oh, matching pilot ship, rather. A new first order tie. Add a pilot and a passenger, matching starfighter for any first order pilot of ability less than three. Okay. Power plus one at opponent system. While matching pilot aboard, immune to attrition less than three. Okay, seems kind of interesting. I'm not overly impressed by it, but I mean, I guess if you, depending on what pilots and stuff you put on it, it is a tie, so it does still get like all power weapons and that kind of stuff, um, but not overall too impressive. So that's it for the dark side cards. Let's move into a game here. 
Uh, we've got Sater playing against Cryptofis. Uh, like I mentioned, Crypto just missed out on qualifying last month. Uh, this may have been one of his matchups. I never know how old these game lengths are when people send them to me. They don't tell me. Like, it doesn't have a date on it that says, like, hey, this game was played on June 27th. Uh, so we've got... Uh, I'm going to get a quick look here. Sater's playing Hunt Down. Started three effects. Crypto is playing... Uh, Diplo, starting three effects. He started Insurrection Strike Planning. I must be alive to speak. Uh, we've got I Am Your Father, Can I Hide Forever, Mob Points Combo, Combat Response. All right, so he's probably going to use, so he's using right now, he's using his You Cannot Hide Forever Mob Points. He's going to pull Karita, it looks like. Um, and then in terms of other options, if he wants to pitch that, he could get the grabber. It looks like about it. So he's not running like security precautions or anything else that would give him additional activation. Uh, but he does make Jedi defense value minus one when swinging at him. Uh, when combined with I am your father and Lord Vader, who adds one to his swings, that could really basically mean he hits just about anybody he wants. Uh, and then combat response to get some matching ships out. So we've got Saber 1 Baron. We've got Slave 1 Boba Fett. Uh, could do Maul and his sh uh, Sith Infiltrator if necessary. And then we've got a Zuckus and an Emperor Shuttle package in here as well. Tarkin in hand. It's a pretty heavy space for uh, for a Hunt Town deck. All right, so he'll get Karita out. Yeah, we're gonna see some Kraken gets pulled. It's gonna pull the two O. He's got enough force he could put Vader down to the uh, exterior site, the Dune Sea, if he wanted to, which he probably will, uh, to flip. So he didn't need to get his 2-2 site instead. Um, smart play pulling Goldenrod just to make sure he doesn't blizzard 4, but uh, to get Vader out, couldn't afford it. It would cost him 2 extra. I... Don't like that at all. He deploys Dooku to the Hollow Theater to protect Visage. I mean, I know Diplo has several spies. I get that. Um, I don't know that uh, wasting a strong ground character uh, just to protect your Visage especially on turn one, is necessarily the way to go. You know, I am your father, Lord Vader, for six to the Dune Sea, pull his lightsaber. Maybe his lightsaber wasn't... I don't know, did we miss the lightsaber pull? Maybe it wasn't there, and he's waiting until next turn. Um, but he's going to have to burn a force. There goes Saber one off the top. Since the card he wouldn't have had to lose if he had Lord Vader at the Dune Sea. With only six force that the light side's activating this turn, they really weren't going to be able to come down with anything that was going to challenge Vader. You know, they're going to pull some stuff. They're going to get the stuff to their system. They're going to move away. Uh, we get a Saverp already. There's some systems. I mean, you could have taken next turn and backed Vader up. few cards. Now he's going to have to burn a second card. There goes a mall. I mean, he's got a no escape, so he can certainly get the mall out, but yeah, I'd rather had that first turn Vader. So there goes Vader, and Vader flips. He plays Ant-Man to get a pilot aboard. He's going to get Antilles. Now we're going to see the He's going to add Tarkin as well. The Saber's not here now. So then the Saber must have been there last turn, and then it just got shuffled through and missed. So now I really don't like that Dooku play. Um, you know, the odds that light side was going to deploy... There you go, cancel Savrip. That's always good. 
I'm always a fan of canceling Sovereign when it's a situation when they might be able to use it, but at the same point in time, getting rid of it and getting it buried under a card uh, with Visage keeps them from retrieving it right away, so that's a fine time to cancel it as well. Diplo gets out Moss Isley. Drop Nara to the Dune Sea, where he's fairly well protected because there's a limited number of dark side characters that can draw at that site. We're going to get a shuffle here. Bright Hope goes to Chandrilla. Uh, we're going to see a pilot get uh, the droids get shuffled over to the Bright Hope, and then the Bright Hope's going to move to Alderaan. That's going to flip the objective. Because Rebels occupy uh, Chandrilla and a battleground site. He's actually got two sites. Both of these guys draw if unable to otherwise. He uploaded any card he wanted, and then he drew a couple of cards. Um, you know, Diplo's not usually quite this fast, but they are certainly spreading out pretty well. So Kraken's not a spy, so you don't have to worry about Kraken being pulled and going and canceling that. Activate a ton. Vader's lightsaber was the bottom card. That's not the one you want to go get. He's going to get the sh shuttle. Oh, he got lost in the wilderness. That's also not good. Uh, he had plenty of shield pulls, and he wasted a grabber on it, too, when it's a lost interrupt. So now Vader's going to go missing. Yeah, if you're not too concerned about shield pull, and then he doesn't search either. Must not know the rules and that he can search. He could have searched that turn with Tarkin and tried to blind her off five. Fett's going to get barriered. This is just going downhill pretty quickly for uh, for Seder. He's got no hand left. He's going to add Baron. And he's got basically no hand left. He's going to draw a couple of cards, but he's uh he's in it pretty deep right now. Both have to lose a force, lose to Vader's lightsaber, because you can always lose a card to get that back later. Nope, so he top decks one and loses Zuckus. I think he's on tilt right now. I think that Lost in the Wilderness really threw him for a loop. <sighs> now he's going to get drained at a couple of spots. Goes the Sonic. Crypto just checks his destiny. He's going to evac. Young Skywalker solo and dodge. Uh, he's probably going to take the dodge, I would think. Oh, there's Gold Leader and Gold One. It just goes from bad to worse. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Gold Leader and Gold One, here we'll pause this for a second, uh, basically means you have to use one force to draw a card for Battle Destiny here. Now, anybody who draws if unable to otherwise gets around that if they don't have the force, but Boba Fett adds one when piloting Slave One, Baron adds one when he's piloting Saber One, uh, six ability between them gives them just a regular Destiny, uh, but with no force saved, he won't be able to draw any of those. Uh, he could spin, though. That is still a possibility, because to draw a card for Destiny, you have to pay one. So he could still at least spin. But uh, we got Blount, we got Leia. Now he's going to add Hera. Hera's going to add a Destiny, because she's with an Imperial. Fett's going to exchange a card. So he had a whole slew of options of stuff to get. He takes Gick. I don't know that that's the card I would have picked. He's 
going to play close call to subtract 3. Chris, what would you have picked? I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at his deck. But again, I feel like there's a better card than Gick. I mean, where are you really going to have to use the Gick this turn? You've got two pilots who forfeit for 11. Can't imagine... Uh, that's going to happen. Uh, Hera used, he used the close call to subtract three from Lando to make Lando a two, uh, which then just got redrawn with Hera. It's, you got to be careful when you've got Hera out or uh, Tarkin out when you're subtracting from the destiny number of characters. Well, actually, when you're just drawing a destiny, we just draw low destiny. Um, with things like that, or with Imperial Justice, or Sith Fury, or Jedi Levitation, um, there's a number of ways that after you modify the draw, they can cancel and then redraw it, and the close call is just useless. Um, so something to keep an eye on there. So by subtracting the three with Lando, uh, because there are one, two, three, four Rebels here, um, it let him redraw it. And he drew Padme instead, who was a three, so that improved it slightly. And then he got a word doomed escape pod combo. So that gave him eight plus add him for the objective, four more. Gives him twelve. That's gonna be both pilots and then some. Light side wins the battle, they get to retrieve a card, no secret plans out. So that's free retrieval. Uh Fett's gonna die, Baron's gonna die. Slave one's gonna die. So that was a full on clear for Mr. Crypto. Now I don't know if it didn't let him use the short range combo, because if he doesn't have the force to be about to draw, then he's not about to see then he can't substitute it. I think that might be how that is coded, how that worked. Um but by exchanging for the Gick, I mean, you only had to lose like one or two cards, and that's with his opponent drawing pretty well. Um, so I don't know that uh, pulling the Gick out was necessary. Uh, Leia gets ba Leia battles Tarkin. That'll keep him from finding Vader, because he didn't search last turn. guys will die. Dark side has no characters or anything like that going in hand. So light side's gonna have huge board position. You'll see them slide the bright hope back over probably. And it's just gonna save that force. It doesn't even need to move it. Uh, you may end up with gold and gold one sticking around here like bright hope tandem may go back to Tatooine slide everybody over. I don't know. He's got to, he may not even need to do any of that. He may just stockpile everybody at one system. What the heck? Wait a second. I guess Crypto messed up because he only drew a Destiny to power instead. So that was a weird mistake situation there. I'm not sure why he did that. He draws one Battle Destiny if I'm able to otherwise. Just draw your one Battle Destiny. Uh, kill Tarkin. Not sure what he was thinking or what the heck happened there, why he decided to instead used her text to add a destiny to power, uh, which was only a one, um, which is why Tarkin got to live. Tarkin didn't get outpowered. And instead, yeah, that went, uh, made some brilliant moves, did everything here, cleared the system, really put the hammer lock on dark side, and then left the door wide open for them to, you know, possibly get back in the game. Now they're going to get a 
drain it. Now, Tarkin finds Vader, uh, which is huge. Then they get a Force Drain in, forcing two card loss. Now we'll get Vader's Saber. For, oh, no, Vader's Saber again. We're going to see a big draw, though. Now we get a chance to reload his hand. There's the Saber. You got the Emperor to go with the shuttle. Just needs another pilot, though. Then we got a Maul. And now Visage kicks back in and is only causing Force Loss to Light Side. So, I still think Diplo's pretty well ahead in this matchup right now. Um, but they certainly, you know, Dark Side was going to be on life support, and, uh, you know, now they've upgraded to uh, serious condition as opposed to critical. Oh, don't lose cards out of your force pile. Ooh. Three characters, top of reserve deck. That's not good. There goes Jin, the block of drain. And there goes young Skywalker. And Celebration. And don't need to cancel that right now. Let him move. Cancel it in the draw phase. Before Visage hits and then buries it. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, no, please quick revert. That's totally the wrong card. It's one of those emperors or something. Activate is going to leave five. Now he'll cancel a celebration, which will get grabs. And then we're going to see our buddy. Uh, oh, Vader gets a lightsaber. Doesn't really help all that much because Jin's still there. But probably get shuffled some people around. There's Maul. Uh, Maul gets stuck with another barrier. This is exactly the reason I still play the backdoor version, so you can blast door controls, that crap. I mean, yeah, they could alter it, but... I'll get an Emperor. He's gonna pull a Force Lightning. Ouch, that hurt. He went from an 80% chance to a 75% chance to kill Jin. Just don't draw Dengar. Of course. The only card in the deck that misses. And of course, that's the one that he gets. Uh, slide Vader over in front of Nara. That makes the most sense. Block all those drains. Yep, there you go. And you can try... Uh, move Tarkin 2. Eh. Top deck's another card. See, I had a left Tarkin, and then I had a Force Lightning Jin again at the start of the turn, because you know the cards on top of your deck are pretty high. Four, one, three. Four, one, three, sitting there for the light side. Now Jin breaks cover. Lando, used pile search, pull a card. Chewy, used pile search, pull a card. Oh, we know he's got the gick. Oh, we know that. Uh, Lightside doesn't know that. 
Keep your eyes open, so no weapon swings. That's pretty clutch. To Battle Destiny takes the Hujix into hand. We're going to get the kick. There's no draw the fire out, so nothing to worry about there. There's at least the five that's going to be on the bottom. Light side wins and gets to retrieve. They'll retrieve the keeping your eyes open. Lando, so they don't have to pay maintenance cost. That makes sense. Now it's going to be Maul and the Gick rather than uh, 13 cards. I'll pick up a card with Evac. And this is going to be Dengar again. Good. <laughs> that would be awkward. Alright, so we get rid of Jin, ends the battle. They get to look at this hand and see, hey look, it's Vader and an Emperor. No biggie. The top deck's an Emperor. I mean, they're similar life force counts at this point. You know, 12, 15 to 12. Light side's actually behind on life force count. They just have better board position. We get a drain of one. We know light side's got the Hujix. Um, but you can still at least cause, you know, a little bit of force loss. Uh, they've got the dodge, too. Uh, Vader's going to hit Nara. So that would cause a force loss. Um but that'll probably just get Hujix. Tarkin will die. So Sater's a North Carolina guy, pretty much only plays online currently. Uh, hopefully he'll be at U.S. Nationals in Atlanta at the end of the month. That'd be great for uh, you know some of these guys who've come back to the game and only played you know really online to uh, to get some real life tournament experience or uh, you know just come down and even to just hang out and meet some people. You're like, oh, those are the guys I play with on the internet. Okay. Tarkin ain't going to cover that. He loses Tarkin, and then, I don't know if he did the math and didn't realize, or didn't look at it, or just thought, hey, let me just lose both guys. Um, oh, wait, it was nine, because Nara adds one to attrition. And Lord Vader only forfeits for eight, right? Yeah, Lord Vader only forfeits for eight. So he did have to get rid of both. I forgot Nara added one. My mistake. Well, that stinks, and that'll probably lock things up here. I mean, light side's not going to retrieve any, but dark side doesn't really have any force left to deploy anybody. And they both lose cards, but light side's going to bounce somebody into the cantina. They're going to drain for one, two, three, four, five this turn without paying for it, which is huge. Vader, there goes Palpatine, there goes Maul. Just no force left to deploy these guys. This is often why, you know, too, this play here, you know, taking Dooku away, a good strong ground character who could have been here, uh, putting, taking away the early pressure that putting Vader down would have Hurt. I mean, if they cancel Visage, they cancel Visage. Um, you know, you can pull Coward, just kind of keep them from draining there for a turn or two, make them spread out kind of how you want them 
too, so then you can start picking them off people like Dooku and Maul and whatnot. Um, and when you get into this situation here, you know, at this point in the game, this is just hurting you just as much as it is them. They're draining more than you. You have limited resources. You're paying to drain. You know, this is just killing you. Um, so if they had canceled it, it wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. So, uh, plus it also makes them waste, you know, a solid character over here. Leia's going over here, you know, and then you can flip and then Leia can't drain over there anyway. Uh, you know, other spies, I mean, maybe Blount or Corrin possibly could have been used instead, but, uh, barriered for the third time in this game. It's pretty bad. Oh, nice. Blind, blind seven. Should keep dark side from losing any overflow. Or maybe not, because one, two, three, four, five locations now, and Solo's going to add one to make that plus, to make that a six. Plus three is nine, so that's going to cause two force loss. Light side's going to win another battle and pay and retrieve another card. Darkseid has to forfeit the Emperor now to cover because they can't afford to lose two more cards. Uh, but Vader's barriered, so he's not moving. So this game is just about over at this point. It's all academic. So they're both down to eight cards apiece, but light side's draining for free. And for a lot more. Uh, it would have been one, two, three, four, five, six this turn. One Visage would have pinged for one more, taking him down to one card left. Um, and it's always possible that Light Side could have deployed and battled and possibly retrieved another uh, card and got another card back. Uh, so on the scoreboard, the game looks pretty close. It's uh, because one of the downsides to Diplos, they put so many cards on the table. Um, but just, you know, watching through the game here, it didn't ever really seem like light side was in any trouble. Uh, it seemed like they kind of just dictated the whole pace of the game, and that's never what you want to do with Hunt Down. You kind of want to force the, the pace and the issues with them. Um, and I think uh, this Dooku play kind of threw the whole rhythm of the deck off. So that's what I would suggest doing differently next time and uh, seeing how that works out for you. Uh, just let, if they cancel Visage, they cancel Visage. Um, and then obviously not searching and the Lost in the Wilderness thing. I mean, you know, there's a shield that prevents that. Um, Diplo, Watch Your Step, those are kind of the decks that you might see a Lost in the Wilderness from. Um, anything that can really uh, utilize use pile searches where they can take that card in secret uh, without it being seen. Um, so yeah, so thanks to Seder for submitting the game. Congrats to Crypto for the win. And uh, Good luck to both you guys in the July OCS, uh, if you're participating in that. Uh, let's jump back over here to our spoiler list. Let's look at our light side cards real quick, and we'll wrap this video up after that. All right. All right, so we got Admiral Raddus. Uh, Rebel, Admiral, Leader. Those are all nice things. Rebel leadership target. Capital starships here, power plus one. Okay, that's cool. Deploy zero. That's awesome. Kind of an ozzle counterpoint there. Once per game, may take into hand rogue one, a hammerhead corvette, or a non-unique corvette. All right, so we can get you other ships out. We'll have to see if there's a hammerhead corvette in this set, or maybe that's a future card design. Uh, Commander Melshi. Another rebel trooper. When deployed, or if just lost, may upload, throw me another charge, or a trooper. Opponent's troopers are power and forfeit minus one here. During any move phase, may use to force to release an imprisoned captive here. Deploy three forfeit four warrior. Okay, that's interesting. Another scout for Endor Strike Team to get throw me another charge. Uh, has some trooper hate for, uh, you know, first order troopers. Could release imprisoned captives. 
I'm not sure how often that text will come into play. Um, but he can take troopers as well into hand. Uh, but even in a non-Rebel Strike team deck, you could be playing Throw Me Another Charge. So that's an easily cyclable 6. Uh, or just the possibility of using it to cancel Trooper Assault if we're worried about map troopers. I don't think that'll be used too often um, outside of a Rebel Trooper deck. But uh, yeah, probably a Rebel Strike team. Uh, another Clone Trooper. During any move phase, fire up another Converse Spy. Okay, that's not bad. EPP, who shoots spies. Permanent weapon is clone sniper rifle. May target a character or vehicle for free. Target hit if destiny plus two, greater than defense value. All right, so this card seems really strong. Um, it's an EPP. Doesn't draw by itself, but it is a clone, so it does trigger some of the other clone uh, cards and benefits. It doesn't make anything forfeit zero, but it, shooting at plus two is pretty strong. Um, and it can shoot undercover spies in any move phase. So it can, you know, you get a couple shots at it possibly. All right, Galen Urso. He's a rebel. Another spy. Once per game, may place a non immune to alter effect in owner's use pile. Interesting. So that would be a way to do get rid of something like strategic reserves, get it off the table, place it in the use pile. Uh, if both players just drew one battle destiny here, may use two force to switch numbers. Okay, that's an old card mechanic. Uh, to keel Kit and Strider from the Premier set, kind of let you do that, switch destiny numbers with your opponent. Um, opponent must first lose to force to fire a super laser. Alright, so again, not sure exactly how often the whole super laser thing is going to be played anyway, but he's already got kind of a soft counter right in the set. We get a new Dodana. Uh, he can get pulled by the virtual Yavin 4 war room that gets started with uh, Yavin 4 operations. So once per game, if had a war room, upload a battleground or a Y-wing present in a war room. Opponent spies may not deploy here. Epic event destiny draws are plus one. Um, so that uh, somebody asked the rule swarm about that. It's not just your epic event cards; it's your draws for epic events. So if you're doing something like TTO, trying to blow up the Death Star, um, using their text to blow up their Death Star, you still get the plus one. So that's pretty solid. Uh, Kenobi. We've seen this guy spoiled for a little while, and uh, those of you who were at the Endor Grand Prix got the preview packs that had a foil version of this virtual slip in it. Uh, during Battle for Loner with the Clones, we've just got some new clones in this set. Activate one, add one to adjust draw on Destiny. Activating a force is always good, especially in battle, especially with things like First Strike being common in uh, dark side decks, so you get to activate a force, then you can play like an interrupt or like a hoojix or something that you might need to, uh, or add one to adjust draw on destiny. Uh, could help with him swinging a weapon, or with the weapon being swung, uh, or like an interrupt being targeted at him, like some like hidden weapons. Um, he could use one force to change the destiny number on it, so maybe it misses him. Once per game, upload a clone or a Reflections 3 lightsaber. He's immune to less than 6. Pretty solid card. General Blissix. At a war room, a system where you have two pilots, snub fighters, opponent draws more, no more than one, but you can't cancel it. And they have to use plus one force to move an Imperial Starship away. Okay, not bad. Uh, we get another alien here, Lax Sivrak. Throwback to the old uh, original premiere. Uh, rules book, as this was pointed out in the original printing, maybe the white border version in the two-player game. Um, they kind of hinted at that being the card title. It has the same picture as this just Dave and Wolfman. Um, I guess maybe when they revised it, they decided to just give him, make him a, a non-unique character instead of a unique version. Um, but that's always been kind of one of those little Easter eggs, broken links kind of thing, or throwback things. So to see this card actually become made now is kind of cool. May move as a react for free while that opponent's battle.
battle ground may not be targeted by opponent's interrupts, and your force drains here may not be canceled or reduced by your opponent. So we get more of that opponent's battleground preventing cancellation stuff for aliens, which is pretty cool. Um, may move as a react for free. That comes in handy. Uh, this also targeted by opponent's interrupts, so uh, benefits... Uh, I guess, you know, Gravity Shadow is a possibility if you're moving from their location. Uh, set for Stun is kind of the big one, though, because otherwise they would just set for Stun you during the Activate phase, and then they could cancel your Drain. Um, so we don't, didn't want that. We don't want to see that happen, so uh, he can't be targeted by that. Uh, Lieutenant Connick, Resistance character. I believe this is the young girl who's uh, kind of leading the evacuation efforts as we see in uh, The Last Jedi. The actress playing her was uh, Carrie Fisher's daughter, uh, Billy Lord, who uh, had kind of kept that under wraps. That was kind of a fun little story. Uh, she didn't tell anyone on set that she was Carrie Fisher's daughter. Uh, they went through several weeks of filming uh, before that little secret got out because uh, Carrie Fisher had like a cold or the flu or something like that and was looking kind of weak. And... Billy went over to her and said something like, hey, mom, you feeling okay? And then other people overheard her call her mom and were like, uh, what, huh, what, what'd you say? So, yeah. So that uh, cat was kind of out of the bag on that one, as the, as legend goes. But this is kind of a nice little mirror to uh, Commander Dasan. Shuttling, landing, taking off to or from here is free, so you can shuttle, take off, land either way, up or down. Uh, once per game, use one force to upload evac control, a resistance bomber, or a resistance transport. Uh, getting evac control is pretty huge, especially, uh, you know, being able to then limit destiny draws and things like that. Uh, light side gets an EPP ray now. I don't know if this will replace uh, the regular version of ray in too many decks. That card is just really strong uh, with its ability to get a card out of use pile. And... Uh, add one to your total battle destiny and get cards out of your force off the bottom of your force pile each turn. But having another character with a lightsaber is never a bad thing. Certainly opens up some more options, um, you know, for things like uh, sorry about the mass clash, those kinds of typical mains weapons cards. Um, and you do get to retrieve a force if you hit a character. So between General Leia's text where, you know, if you initiate a battle with a resistance character, you can retrieve a force, and then she hits somebody, and then she retrieves another force. Uh, it could be, you know, a decent little force swing there. Rose. Rosie Rose Rose. Uh, Finn about to be lost from same site. Place him in use pile instead. That's pretty huge, especially because you can deploy Finn as a react, and he adds. So, like, you could slap Rose as a passenger on the Falcon with Ray and Lando, and then old allies, you know, and they battle you and you react by deploying Finn for free, and then he forfeits to your use pile to cover six. So that could really help lock down, you know, that 2-2 drain site on Jakku. And during your control phase, if present at a battleground site and another resistance character on table or pages out of play, you can retrieve a force. Not bad. Uh, she might be out. I don't know that she'll be outside all that often, but uh, you know, probably be more inside a vehicle so she doesn't get hit. But she's only four foot two, so not really uh, too big a loss if she gets hit there. Saw Guerrero. I want. I can only imagine what kind of picture we're gonna get for this one because trying to make somebody look like Forrest Whitaker never an easy task. Attrition against opponent, plus one for each of their characters present. Opponent may not reduce your force drains here, so we get some more force drain protection once per game. If in battle with an Imperial or a Rebel, may lose top card to preserve deck to cancel a non-immune descent interrupt. So it's kind of a little bit like the Conquest, and then you can cancel an interrupt. It's only once per game. There's some restrictions on it. He does add a bunch to attrition for each of their characters present. So if they've got three or four guys piled up against them, he's adding four to attrition. That could be uh, pretty interesting. Uh, not even Cephla. All right. 
Not sure where this character comes to us from. It's a rebel, so possibly from rebels or some other, uh, you know, alternate, uh, you know, TV show or something. Deployed. Hey, maybe this character was in Rogue One somewhere, and I just don't uh, remember them or know who they were. Could have been part of Saul Guerrero's little band. Maybe one of those guys that you just, you know, they were wandering around. You don't know who they were. Uh, when deployed, or if just lost, so we get that text again, you may draw a bottom card of use pile. Okay, that's got some, certainly some potential there. When deployed, draw a bottom card of use pile. Then lost, draw a bottom card of use pile. So kind of, kind of we're seeing some of these mechanics here, similar to some of the uh, ISB agents that Darkseid has had, where they trigger things when they come into play or leave table. Uh, you know, it's that Hearthstone, Battlecry, Death Rattle mechanic that, uh, you know, Shusky was talking about back in, you know, set three, set four, that he kind of wanted to integrate a little bit, very mildly, into Star Wars. Now we see Lightside get some uh, uses out of that kind of stuff as well. During battle, may make a just drawn weapon or battle destiny here, minus X, where X is the number of your spies out of play. Okay. Not undercover spies are mutant never Yalmo. All right. Uh, Yaxjet deploys free power plus two at Cloud City, Jabba's Palace, or Maz's Palace location. Okay, so gets the updated. I mean, the first part of the text was the same. We get the little bonus here of adding the Maz's Palace. Once per turn, if you just drew an alien or independent starship for destiny, take into hand, cancel, and redraw. That's pretty good, especially for QMC. That's pretty solid. Uh, you draw lots of aliens for Destiny all the time in those decks because um, you play like nine or ten of them and, uh, you know, your Destiny draw is not that great. So being able to cycle some of those guys out of your deck and into your hand, uh, very strong. New Defensive Shield. There is another. This one basically lets Light Side give up Luke. Well, give up Leia for bringing before me and trigger all that kind of stuff. Um, and then not have to worry about uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Not have to worry about um, that your destiny would bring him before me, making you lose force for like Luke being in space. Uh, you can't use Death Star 2 Luke. He's lost. But you can use non-Jedi Luke's. So any of the Luke's piloting Red 5 kind of thing, uh, you could do that, and then you could make this Bring Him Before Me stuff uh, all target Leia instead. Uh, it also helps if your Episode 7 objective, so that's old allies, non-Jedi Leia is immune to the flip side of Hunt Down. It's kind of always been a problem in that deck, uh, you know, hunt down pretty much, you know, even with Ray suspending visage, uh, hunt down's pretty much always on the seven side all game. So, uh, Leia couldn't really do anything. She's kind of a dead character. She kind of actually hurts you putting her in, in play because you can't drain with her or initiate battle with her. Um, so it does kind of become problematic. So this kind of closes that off a little bit. I know some people have, uh, not been too happy about this card. Certainly see if anything gets revised with it or uh, if it stays as is and they just kind of let those two or three people who have been yelling the loudest just kind of tire themselves out. Brave Resistance, Episode 7 location on table. You deploy it. Generation is plus one at Jakku Battlegrounds you occupy. That's nice. Nice little force bump for uh, Jakku CPV or old allies. Uh, during your deploy phase, may place a resistance character from hand on top of used pile to upload a resistance character. That's really huge. So you get someone like Rose or Finn or a second copy of Poe that you don't really need, uh, and you put that character from hand on top of your used pile, and then you go get a better resistance character out of your reserve deck. Uh, pretty awesome, especially if you happen to be using strike planning, and then you take Leia, and you're like, I don't need Leia right now. What I really need is Solo to pilot my Falcon, or Ray, or something like that. Uh, you can just throw her back, 
go get somebody else and then just use your second strike panning pole if you haven't already or a rebel leadership or something and fish Leia back out somewhere down the road. Relatively unprotected. While you occupy, ooh, this one's interesting. To play on table, while you occupy two battlegrounds or opponent's site, you lose no more than one force to carbon freezing or that thing's operational. Well, that's certainly going to put a big damper on a couple of dark side decks. Uh, I mean, TTO typically causes about three force loss, so having that reduced to one is not great. And especially because the only requirements are just to occupy two battlegrounds or occupy opponent's site. Um, both TTO and anything that would carbon freeze, they're giving you the carbonite chamber. So just by occupying their locations, you're pro you know, protecting yourself from force loss. Um, even if you, you know, try to go to the, you can send a spy to their prison because uh, it's their site. And then you don't lose, you know, you only lose one force to carbon freezing. So... We may see the CCT decks take that carbon freezing mechanic out. It's only three or four cards. They could easily just go back to playing uh, with a frozen captive and taking away Han or Corn Horn from light side. Uh, as opposed to taking any rebel out of their deck. Usually, you know, with Diplo being common or ISB being kind of prevalent for, for dark side, they usually have some rebels that they can afford to lose um, that are kind of, you know, lower on the pole than Han or Corn. So maybe we'll see that get shifted back. Uh, or to play on a Star Destroyer or Vehicle. Its immunity to attrition is minus four and it may not react. Making that vehicle that Veers is piloting immune to minus four. So be instead now being immune to less than six, it's immune to less than two. Um, that's certainly going to hurt dark side vehicle decks take them down a notch not sure i like this second i mean i understand giving it a second feature but so it's not just like a complete dead card but i don't know that this is necessarily the way i'd want to go with it i mean veers plus you know and a blizzard walker is pretty strong but i don't know it seems like you're investing a lot of force to do it i mean it's nine it's two low destiny cards i don't know Stardust to play on Data Vault, so I guess we'll see that with the uh, Scarif sites. Relocate Stardust to your spy during control phase. If on your spy at a battleground you occupy, opponent loses two force. If about to leave table, move it back to the Data Vault. All right. Cancel broken concentration, lateral damage, or limited resources. Well, that's pretty awesome right there. There's three uh, pretty powerful dark side cards that all get canceled. Uh, or place a card just stacked on droid racks or strategic reserves in opponent's lost pile. Well, that kind of sucks for a couple of decks there. That just took invasion back down a peg, and strategic reserves had already taken a hit by now only being able to use non-uniques. And now it just uh, peeled a guy off of it. Just drew a starship for destiny. Take that starship into hand. Cancel and redraw. Use to be forced to reupload any effect. Yeah. All right. So we just add a whole bunch of new flavor text to the front side, to the top half of the card here. That's immune to sense, uh, lateral damage, broken concentration, limited resources. A very powerful dark side card. So I expect this one to see quite a bit of play, and uh, I expect these cards to kind of disappear. It'd be interesting to see whether this card actually sees play. This card probably will see play because of the other stuff. If it just said this and it just canceled these three cards, I would expect that people wouldn't necessarily play it right away because they would expect everyone to take these cards out of their decks anyway. This kind of becomes that whole thing. You know, I think you're going to take these cards out of your deck, so I'm not going to play it. And then Dark Side might think that, hey, I think you're going to assume everyone's just going to stop playing these cards because there's a new canceller for it. So I can go ahead and keep playing them until people actually start playing the canceller. Um, but because it also does other stuff, it does this with Droid Racks and Strategic Reserves, uh, which are two fairly popular decks. And then it does this other text here about 
you know, I can easily see this card going in like a Diplo or a QMC or something like that to get uh, your uh, celebration back. You draw Starships for Destiny to redraw it. So, yeah. Uh, all right, almost done here. A couple more left to go. We get Knights of the Old Republic. Used if present with a Dark Jedi or Episode 1 Jedi. Your Padawan is power plus two for remainder of turn. All right, so you got Anakin or uh, Kane and Jarrus, I think right now are the only two Padawans. I don't think Ray's a Padawan yet. Maybe we'll see a future version of her. Uh, or download one, episode one, lightsaber. I could get Obi a lightsaber or Qui-Gon. Lost once per game, retrieve a Padawan or episode one, lightsaber. So you could get back Anakin or your just lost light, you know, or an episode one lightsaber. Uh, it's not bad, especially with Qui Gon's lightsaber being Destiny Five. You got possibilities there. Uh, Odin first aid. So you're kind of similar to the kind of almost a mirror of the dark side card that we saw with the transporting during the move phase. Um, but we also get, you know, the weapon text is about to be hit. You prevent it from having its forfeit reduced and making it immune to Dr. E. That's pretty big for a remainder of turn or canceling disarmed. So I guess we'll probably see disarmed go away for a while for both sides because of a card like this. This is the big one, Rescue in the Clouds V. Uh, this is pretty much the text that was on Let the Wookiee Win in Legacy. They decided to move it to a easier to find cheap common card from Cloud City as opposed to in a new hope rare that uh, the price had skyrocketed on in 2012 because of just how strong the card was that everybody wanted three to four copies of it and it was from you know a new hope which isn't i mean it's an easy card to, it's an easy set to find cards from but let the wookie win isn't exactly a card people kept lying around in multiples of because it didn't do anything back then um so they decided to move it to a card that was more easily accessible for today's players and the people returning to the game that would require a much lower uh, investment. So kudos to, well, good job. It's the right decision. Personally, not thrilled with it because I have a bunch of Let the Wookie wins that are just sitting there collecting dust again. But maybe they'll come back in another fashion. I'll do something else in the future. Peek at top three cards of preserve deck, take one into hand, reshuffle. It's as simple as that. Look at the top three cards of your deck, take the best one into hand, reshuffle the rest of your deck, and it's used, I think, Rescue in the Clouds is a five. Uh, cancel a just drawn destiny, targeting the ability or defense value of your non undercover spy of ability less than five at a system or mobile location. Targeting the ability or defense value. So set for stun again, if you happen to be at a mobile location like Cloud City, you could uh, prevent yourself from getting trampled or choked by uh, Vader. I guess it would also apply to weapon destinies too. Just drawn destiny targeting the ability, yeah, I mean, or defense value. So yeah, you could, you could cancel a weapon swing as well. So that's uh, that's actually pretty huge. Uh, second feature, and then it's got a third feature: cancel close call. Uh, so if you're playing light side, expect this card to get grabbed. That's just kind of what dark side's gonna grab for a while. Um, they're gonna keep, they're gonna grab it to keep you from cycling cards and stacking and setting up your destiny draws and, you know funneling cards out of your deck into your hand and the fact that it also cancels close call this is just screams grab or bait um, so if you're playing a light side deck you might see start to see you know other cards then they're going to get through cards like it could be worse cards like we're doomed cards like uh, you know old ben or how do we get into this mess uh, blaster deflection you know those kinds of cards that were normally kind of the ones that got grabbed. Uh, Darkseid might have to grab this one now. Darkseid might have to start playing two grabbers, three grabbers. Uh, 
uh, just to start taking away some of these interrupts from light side. Should be interesting. Uh, we get a bunch of scarif sites here. One, two, three, four, five scarif sites. You can kind of read what they all do. We're not going to get too much into those because they all kind of tie into an objective that's down here as well. Uh, Yavin 4 also gets the ruins. If Yavin 4 blown away, the force loss is reduced by 4. If you have a force system on table, force strain minus one here. Interesting. Okay. But here's the objective. Light side gets a new objective. Because light side needed a new objective. Because they haven't had one in a little while. And, uh, you know, they got a big boost this set as well. So it was a combination of light side getting new cards to make them better and dark side getting hurt. Uh, most people kind of feel that the pendulum has really swung back the other way, maybe a little too far. Uh, I'm sure that'll balance itself out, and then, you know, they'll make some adjustments in set 10. That should bring it back closer to the middle. Uh, you know, it always happens from time to time. One side's always better than the other for a little bit, and then, uh, you know, dark side's kind of had its advantages for a little while here. So this kind of brings, gives light side a chance to shine. So what does this objective do? All right, so you deploy some Yavin, the Yavin 4 War Room. You deploy the system, the Data Vault, and that Stardust card. You can't deploy Jedi, but you can play Bays and Chariot and Rebel Troopers become spies. Okay. You can download a Rebel Starship, except Han Chewie Falcon or Home 1, so you can get ships out. All right. Each player's characters... Vehicles are deployed plus two to Scarif sites that player does not occupy. So the first guy costs you plus two, and then they kind of hold open the shield for everybody else to get through. Okay. Except Imperials and Spies. So the fact that your Rebel guys are Spies, your Rogue One characters that have already come into play, uh, Jin, Cassian, those guys, they're all Spies now. So they won't be affected by this plus two. So it's kind of trying to limit you to playing most of those guys, but not exactly flat out saying it. You know, you can't play Jedi, but you know you could still play Luke and uh, Leia and other characters who weren't part of this little Rogue One mission. It's just going to cost you a little more unless they happen to be, uh, you know, the second or third character you deploy. You flip a view control two locations. Spies are defense value plus two, immune to undercover. While Stardust on your spy, they can't cancel your force drains at battlegrounds. Once per turn, place a rebel in your lost pile out of play to cancel a just drawn destiny. Targeting the ability or defense value of your rebel or to make a regular move with your spy during your control phase. Alright, so again, not a whole lot of stellar benefits. I mean, Making a regular move with your spy is pretty good because you move a guy and put him another pile of guys in front of him and then battle and beat somebody up. That's always nice. Moving outside of the move phase is always a strong ability. Um, but not quite the typical strength of text that we see on the flip side of objectives usually. Uh, drains can't be canceled. And I know there's something with Stardust where we saw that back up here. Uh... They lose two force if he's on a, if it's the spy is at a battleground that you occupy. So there's a little bit of force loss there. It's on the effect, not on the objective. Um, and then looking at the sites, you get uh, drain bonus for light side, movement bonus, docking bay transit bonus, moving around, bouncing around. Eh, yeah. It seems okay, but I don't know necessarily that it's, uh, you know, like map kind of jumped right out of the box and was a top-level deck. This seems like this one's going to need a lot of uh, a lot of play testing, a lot of revision to, uh, to really get going. Uh, minor errata to the Acclimator. I got to go look that one up because I don't know what's changed. 
acclimator. May add blah blah blah, adds one to attrition against opponent for against opponent here for each starship here. Okay, so they left the this this word here was missing from the first the, the current version of the card. So it made it imply that the attrition being added might have been global. So they just clarified that. get uh, three cards, three ships. So we get our Hammerhead Corvette. This is the one that Radis can upload. Lightmaker, Ability 2, Permanent Pilot, cancels opponent's immunity to attrition here. That's pretty awesome. While at Scarif, it adds two to attempt to blow away Shield Gate. Did I miss something on Scarif where you can blow up the Shield Gate? Uh, I don't remember seeing that. Maybe that will be... Something that comes out in the future sets, because I don't see that card on the list. I guess we'll have to wait for that one. Okay, so that's still pretty cool. It's a, you know, not a great deploy forfeit ratio of a Corvette. Um, but it does cancel opponent's immunity to attrition here, and that's pretty, always a good thing. Red 5. This is the card that seems to have gotten the most buzz. Uh, add one pilot and one astromech, but it has a nav computer, so it doesn't need an astromech aboard to move, unlike the regular version of Red 5, which does. While Luke piloting, it's maneuver plus 2. It's immune to attrition, completely immune to attrition, which is awesome. Uh, and you may initiate battles and force drains here, regardless of objective restrictions. So, hunt down. So, Luke in space was always a hindrance, uh, a handicap against hunt down, a liability. You know, he, you put him down in space and he can't drain from the flip side, so you, you're not draining at that system. Uh, he's keeping the objective on not flipping the objective. He can't battle, so then they can park in front of him and then satisfy a uh, battle plan without worried about, you know, you fighting them. So this kind of takes that away combo that up with Luke the Rebellion's Hope who does stuff when he's in Red 5 and you've got a pretty nice little package there and lastly Blue 11 add one pilot, two passengers this is a U-Wing this is a vehicle permanent pilot provides ability of two once per turn may deploy a non-pilot rebel with ability less than five aboard there are quite a few of those I think I pulled the list and posted it somewhere, uh, at least what I could find on Jemp. It's a bunch of, you know, there's obviously there's some non-unique Rebel Trooper guys, but then there's also pretty much all of the Rogue One guys uh, get pulled out. The big one, though, is that it does pull Leia Rebel Princess. Uh, she is a non-pilot Rebel of ability less than five, so pulling her aboard a vehicle that's immune to attrition, where she could then potentially start canceling force drains. Um, that may end up being something that may get tweaked. I don't know. Uh, they play tested it, and they said it wasn't as big a deal on paper as it, you know, in games as it looks on paper. So hopefully uh, that plays out right. But that's it for our set nine spoiler list. Uh, again, hopefully this will come out in the next week or two. We'll have a PDF by the middle of the month so people can start doing their arts and crafts before nationals at the end of the month. Thank you guys for watching, suffering through all this uh, hour and a half long video as I went through the set nine cards. Um, appreciate you all keeping uh, the support and keeping sending me the game links. Uh, feel free to do that through the private message on the PC forums and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, you guys have a great day. Thanks.